I, I guess uh, let's get started. Okay, I hope uh, they'll join. So um, we were on uh, problem sheet number 13, right? So last time I think uh, we were discussing problem number one and then we faced some technical difficulties. So uh, did, you, did you guys uh, try out these problems? Did you guys try out these problems? These problems, uh, please let me know. Yes, were you able to solve all of them? Did you get an answer to all of them? All the 10, all the 10 problems. Or how many, how many were you able to do? How many, how many questions were you able to do? Hello. Yeah, how many, how many questions were you able to solve? Can you please let me know? Most of them, okay. What about Anjali? You were able to solve most of them, okay. By the way, uh, you need to note uh, two things. First of all, uh, uh, when you're solving these questions, make sure that uh, you try them on your own, okay? Of course, there are solutions and answer keys given at the end. That is for you to cross-check. Cross-check your answer. So the only way to do learn math is by actually doing math, okay? So you should spend sufficient time actually working out this problem. Secondly, uh, as far as possible, try to avoid calculators, okay? But uh, if it's lengthy, if it's getting complicated, you can pick up the calculator, okay? Otherwise, as far as possible, do not uh, use calculator. Okay. Let's quickly go through these problems before we move on to the next topic, which is going to be linear inequalities, linear inequalities in one variable. So currently we are discussing about linear equations and these are the typical uh, SAT problems where there will be lengthy word problems which will describe a situation. Most of the time it will describe a real life situation where you'll be, you should be able to understand the statement, convert it into mathematical expressions and then do the mathematical operations and arrive at the answer. Okay, so let's see this. So we have uh, problem number one. So the Tuskers won three of the 21, first 21 games. How many games in a row after these 21 games do they have to win in order to have won exactly three over five of the game, three by fifth of the games they have played. So altogether, altogether so far, 21 games are over and they have won three. Okay, now let us assume that there are X more games happening. X more games are happening. Let us assume that there were X more uh, games happening. So now there will be 21 plus X games. And now it's given the question that they are going to win all of these games. They are going to win all of these games. So they would have won three plus X games. You understand this idea? Out of the 21 games that is already over, they have won three. Now there are X more games happening. We are assuming that they're going to win all of them. So out of the 21 plus X games that is happening, they will win three plus X. This idea is clear? Yeah. Now this three plus X, will be three plus X games that they have won is going to be three fifth of the total games. 
So this 3 plus x is going to be 3 fifth of the total games they have played. So the expression is going to be 3 plus x by 21 plus x is going to be 3 by 5. Or in other words, your 3 plus x is going to be 3 by fifth of 21 plus x. Right? So the idea is you have to understand the question. Then you have to choose the unknown quantity. Okay. So we have chosen the unknown quantity as a number of game to be played. Now. Okay. So altogether there are 3 plus x games. Uh, sorry. 21 plus x games to be played. And we are assuming that they are going to win all of them. So they would have won 3 plus x games. And we have to find the value of x in such a way that by the time they complete 21 plus x games, they would have won three fifth of all the games. Okay, that is the idea given in the question. Now, if you write it in this way, this is not a linear equation. But if you write it in this way, just if you just cross mul multiply, it is going to be a linear equation. So this is basically a Linear equation, this is a problem from linear equation, but if you write it in this form, this may not look like a linear e equation, <coughs> but this is an equation which can be converted to a linear equation, right? This can be converted to a linear equation. So we are, uh, we have already seen these kind of equations. We have already seen these kind of equations which can be converted to a linear equation. We just need to cross multiply. So cross multiply. So five, times 3 plus x is going to be 3 times 21 plus x. So we have 5 into 3 is 15 plus 5x is going to be 3 times 21 is going to be 63 plus 3x. Collect all variables to one side. So we have 5x minus 3x is equal to 63 minus 15. So we have 2x is equal to, uh, this is going to be 48. So your x is going to be 24. 24 is the answer, right? 24 is the answer. Now you may actually go back to the question and verify this fact. Okay, verify this fact. How? See, they have already played 21 games. Now they're going to play 24 more games. So altogether, altogether they're going to play 45 games. Okay, 45 games. Now we are assuming that they are winning all 24 of these games. Okay, now we have to calculate 3 by 5 of 45. So here, 5 and 45 is 9 times. So we have 3 times 9, which is 27. And that is true because, you know, 3 plus 4 is going to be 27. So initially, they have won 3 out of 21. But after playing 24 more games and after winning all of them, they will be winning 27 out of 45 games. Right? So that is the idea in this question. Shall I move on to the next question? Can, can you, can you uh, specify the questions which you found difficult so that I can spend more time on those questions? Can you specify those questions uh, which you found difficult? Please. The numbers, question numbers. I am definitely discussing all the questions because you know, uh, if somebody is not attending the class, they can watch the recording. I, I guess Robin is not available yet. So also for your future reference, say you want to go back to this question, you want to practice these questions once again. Okay. So I'll make sure that all the questions are discussed in the class and the recordings will be made available so that in future, if you want to have a look at it, you, you can always have a look. So can you please let me know which questions you found difficult, the numbers, so that I would know. Can you please specify the question numbers? Nine, 
for Olivia and uh, <clears throat> for others, Anjali and Prisha. Can you tell me the ones you found uh, difficult? The questions which you found as difficult ones? Prisha and Anjali, could you please let me know? Yeah, yeah, take your time, no problem. Just have a look at the problem sheet and tell me which questions. Yeah, fourth one and uh, yeah, nine. All right, okay, fine. <clears throat> now let's move on to the question number two. Question number two is uh, three years ago, Mr. Fosai was two thirds as old as. He will be eight years from now. How old is Mr. Fosse now? So this is a typical age problem. Okay, let's assume that his present age is X. So present age is going to be X. Three years ago, three years ago, his age was X minus three, right? And now, uh, Eight years from now, eight years from now, he will be X plus eight. Now, question clearly says, three years ago, Mr. Fosai was two thirds as old as he will be eight years from now, right? So the question says, this quantity is going to be two thirds of this quantity, right? So your X minus, Three is going to be two thirds of x plus eight. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Now you just take three to the other side. Three is in the denominator. Take three to the other side. So we have three times x minus three is equal to two times x plus eight. Three times x minus three is equal to two times x plus eight. So we have 3x minus 9 is equal to 2x plus 16. 3x minus 9 is equal to 2x plus 16. So bring the like terms to one side, bring the numbers to the other side. So we have 3x minus 2x is equal to 9 plus 16. So your x is going to be 25. 25 is the answer. Now you may actually, if you want, you can actually verify the answer. Three years back, three years ago, he was 22. Okay, eight years from now, his present age is 25. Okay, his present age is 25. Three years ago, he was 22. And eight years from now, he will be 25 plus eight, 33, right? His present age is 25. Three years ago, he was 22. Eight years from now, he'll be 33. And this is what we have, 33 and 22. How are they connected? 22 is going to be two thirds of 33. 22 is nothing but two thirds of 33, right? So we have the answer. Yes. Okay. Please give a 
please give me an okay or uh, yes so that I can move on to the next question. Yeah. Yes, cool. So let's go to the next question. The sum of three consecutive multiples of 11 is 363. The smallest among these is. Now, again, they are talking about consecutive multiples of 11. So, you know, the multiples of 11 will look like, multiples of 11 will look like 1 times 11, 2 times 11, 3 times 11. In general, in general, any multiple of 11 will be n times 11, right? n times 11. So what will be the next multiple of 11? Please listen carefully. Any multiple of 11 will be of this form. So let us assume that the first multiple of 11 that we are going to consider is n times 11. Now they are talking about three consecutive multiples of 11. So if we, if we see that the first multiple of 11 that we're going to consider is n times 11, what will be the next multiple of 11? What will be the next multiple of 11? You can see the pattern here. That is 1 times 11, 2 times 11, 3 times 11, 4 times 11, 5 times 11. There's a pattern, right? So n times 11, what will be the next multiple of 11? If I say, if I'm going to use a particular multiple of 11 as n times 11, what will be the next multiple of 11? What will be the next multiple of 11? Please let me know what will be the next multiple of 11? Hello, are you with me? Hello, 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 hello. See, if I'm choosing a particular multiple of 11 as n times 11, what do you think will be the next multiples of 11? What will be the next multiple of 11? That's my question. What will be the next multiple? Yeah, n plus 1 times 11, right? n plus 1 times 11. I hope that's clear. n plus 1 times 11. The next multiple is going to be n plus 1 times 11. You, you can get that just from the pattern, right? See, 1 times 11, 2 times 11, 3 times 11. Okay, that's a pattern. Or you can think in this way. You have n times 11. To get the next multiple of 11, you have to add 11. Right? To get the next multiple of 11, you just add 11. You just add 11. Now, this is n times 11 plus 1 times 11. So, you just take 11 out. So this is going to be n plus 1 times 11. Hope this is clear. n times 11 plus 1 times 11 is going to be n plus 1 times 11. And the next multiple of 11 is going to be n plus 2 times 11. Right? So we have three multiples of 11. One is n times 11. Next is n plus 1 times 11. Next is n plus 2 times 11. And if you say the sum of three consecutive multiples of 11 is 363, 
you just have to add these three numbers n times 11 plus n plus 1 times 11 plus n plus 2 times 11 is going to be 363. Three. Okay, so you just take 11 outside as a common term n plus n plus 1 plus n plus 2 times 11 is equal to 363. Now you simplify the <laughs> expression. <clears throat> Inside the bracket, we have n plus n plus 1 plus n plus 2. That is going to be 3n plus 3 times 11 is going to be 363. So your 3n plus 3 is going to be 363 divided by 11. So that is going to be uh, you can just write this is 33, so that is 3 times, so 3 times, so this is 33. Right, so take 3 to the other side, we have 3n is equal to 30, n is equal to 10. Otherwise, otherwise what do you do? Otherwise, what you do, you write 3n plus 3 as 3 times n plus 1 and 33 as 3 times 11. From this, 3 gets cancelled. You have n plus 1 is equal to 11. You have n is equal to 10. Either way, you have got n is equal to 10. Either way, you have got n is equal to 10. Right? Now, Question is, the smallest among these is, so smallest among these is going to be n times 11, n is 10, so that is 110. Of course, we can verify the answer. The next multiple is going to be 121, the next number is going to be 132. If you add all of them, this is going to be 363. So that is our answer. Cool. Yes. Yes. Now let's go to the next question. Yeah. Somebody told me that uh, question number four was difficult. So let's solve. So, so far so good, right? If you're stuck at some point, please do let me know. No. Cool. So let's go to question number four. In, instead of adding 12 to a number x and then divide the sum by 13, Tricky Joe subtracted 13 from the number and then divided the difference by 12. He then arrives at the same value he should have originally obtained. What is the number x? Uh -huh, that's an interesting question. So instead of adding 12 to a number and then divide that sum by 30, some person subtracted 13 and divided it by 12 and then arrived at the same answer that he should have originally obtained. So what is that number x? That's a very interesting question. So listen carefully. So we don't have to choose X because it's already given that there is an unknown quantity X. Okay. Now adding 12 and dividing by 13. So adding 12, adding 12 and dividing by 13. That is what he should have originally done. Okay. He should have done these operations. He should have added, he should have added uh, 12 to the number and then he should have divided the sum, the entire number by 13. So that quantity is x plus 12 divided by 13. 
Trichijo subtracted 13. So instead of doing these operations, what did he do? What did he do? He subtracted 13. He subtracted 13 and then divided the difference by 12. So instead of adding 12 to the number and dividing by 13, he subtracted 13 and divided by 12. And interestingly, both of these numbers came out to be the same. Interestingly, both of these numbers came out to be the same. So just, we just need to equate these quantities. We just equate these quantities. That's all. Is this clear? Please let me know. Anjali and others. Yeah. Olivia, Krisha. Hope this is clear. Yeah. Now you just cross multiply. I mean, just simple math. It is 12 times x plus 2. 12 is equal to 13 times x minus 13. So 12x plus 144 is going to be 13x. Minus 30 times 13 is 169. Right? Yeah. Now you just take the like terms to one side. So we have 13x minus 12x is equal to 144 plus 169. Yeah. So this is 313 is equal to x. So how did I quickly got uh, 313? See, I, I just observed that there is 140 here. There is 160 here. 140 plus 160 is 300. And you are left with 4 and 9. You can quickly do that. Okay, 313 is equal to x. 313 is equal to x. So that is our answer. So that is the answer. Let's go to the next question. The sum of ages of three children is 32. Age of the oldest is twice the age of the youngest. The two older children differ by three years. What is the age of the youngest child? Uh, of course, there are three numbers involved. There are three persons. Their ages are described in the question. So we might, uh, at first glance, we, we might look like there are three unknown quantities. And you might uh, want to feel like choosing, you might uh, feel like choosing three variables, but it's not the case, okay? Because they are, these are connected, okay? When you're solving a problem, as far as possible, try to choose the least number of variables. So in this case, we can solve this question by choosing one variable. So we are just asked to find the age of the youngest child. So let's call this as X. Yeah, so we have youngest, then we have the middle person and we have the oldest one. And we are going to call the young person as age at x. And age of the oldest is twice the age of the youngest. So this is going to be two times x. This is two times x. Right. Now they say the older two children differ by three years. So these two persons differ by three years. What does that mean? What does that mean? The middle guy, the middle child is younger than the oldest child by three years. Okay. So this person is going to be 2x minus three. I hope you understood. So from the first, uh, so we have not used this statement so far. We haven't used this statement so far. We just looked at the statement 
it says age of the oldest is twice the age of the youngest so we have chosen x as the age of the youngest child now automatically age of the oldest child is going to be 2x and the difference between the two older child is 3 ages of two older child is children is 3 so if this is 2x this has to be 2x minus 3 if that is 2x the other one has to be 2x minus 3 now you just add all of them because you know the first statement talks about the sum of the ages so we have x plus 2x minus 3 plus 2x that is going to be 32. Now you simplify these expressions, simplify these expressions and then you have the answer. Okay, I hope this is clear. We have x as age of the youngest child, then age of the oldest uh, child is going to be 2x. Okay, and the age of the middle child is going to be 2x minus 3. So just add them. We have x plus 2x minus 3 plus 2x is equal to 32. You combine the like terms. We have x here, 2x here, 2x here. Altogether, we have 5x minus 3 is equal to 32. So we have 5x is equal to 35. And your x comes out as 7. X come to, comes out as 7. Mm. So 7 is the answer. 7 is the answer. Now, you may want to verify the answer. Okay. We can quickly verify the answer if, because if x is 7, the ages are going to be 7, 14, and 11. Now, just look at the statements. The oldest person is twice the youngest. The difference between these two older children is 3. And some of these numbers is 32. Uh, 32. Cool. All the conditions are satisfied. So our answer is right. I hope this is clear. Shall I go to the next question? Yeah. The sum of three consecutive even numbers is 72. <clears throat> the sum can be represented by the equation n plus n plus 2 plus n plus 4 is equal to 72. What does n represent? It's a very simple question, I guess. Uh, you know, the, we had taken, previously we had taken consecutive multiples of 11. Here we are talking about consecutive multiples of, uh, consecutive even numbers. Means you keep adding two. You take the smallest number as n, you keep adding 2. So we have n plus, n plus 2 is the next number, n plus 4 is the next number. So 72 is the sum. So what does n represent? Of course, n represents the smallest number, right? The least number. n represents the least number. n represents the least number. Yes. So let's go to the next question. A music club charges $3 per ticket for an event. Their expenses are $115. In order for the club to make $110 after expenses, how many people must attend the event? Again, that's a very typical question. That's actually an easy question. So let's model this equation as a linear equation. Let's model this equation as a linear equation. So a music club charges $3 per ticket for an event. So we have to figure out how many people must attend the event. So let's assume that there are N people attending the event. There are N people attending the event. So what is the revenue they're getting? 
Okay, if there are n people attending the events and you're charging $3 per person, there are n persons attending the event, you're charging $3 per person, what is the revenue you're making? You're making three times n or n times three, right? So that is the revenue in dollars that you're making. Now, their expenses are 150. In order for the club to make $110 after expenses, how many people? So the total revenue that they, they should, they are expecting, the total revenue they are expecting is, is $110 after expenses. So to meet the expenses, they need $115. And apart from that, we are expecting a, a profit of 110. So this has to be 115 for their expenses and 110 as their profits. I hope this is clear. So the revenue is expense plus profits. The revenue is equal to expense plus profit. Other words, in other words, your profit is equal to revenue minus cost or expenses. Okay. So we have 3N is equal to 225. So your N is equal to 225 divided by 3, which is going to be 7. 15 is 5. 75. 75. So 75 is our answer. Cool, 75 is the answer. Yes, ma'am. So let's go to the next question. <clears throat> Problem number eight. So Linz sold four more shirts than Grigory. Frango sold three times as many shirts as Linz. In total, three sold 51 shirts. Which equation represent the number of shirts Grigory sold? Okay. So when you look at the options, they have not actually sold and find the value of G. G is taken as a variable. Okay. The number of shirts sold by Grigory is taken as the variable G. This is taken as the variable G. Options all talk about the variable G. There is an equation in G. They have not actually solved and found out the value of G. So we just have to arrive at the equation. That's all. We don't have to solve it. We, have, we can stop one step before the solution. Right? So we are assuming that this person, Grigory, has sold G, G number of t-shirts. <coughs> G number of t-shirts. And then what happens to Linz? So Grigory has sold G number of t-shirts. Yes. So the person, Linz, has sold four more t-shirts no, it's not t-shirts, it's shirts. Four more shirts than Grigory. So it's going to be G plus four. All right? And Frango. Frango, how many? Three times as many shirts as Liz. So this is three times G plus four. Three times G plus four. I hope these expressions are clear. Grigory sold G, G shirts. Linz sold G plus four. Frango sold three times as many shirts as Linz. So that is three times G plus four. If you add all these quantities, you're going to get 51. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Robin, uh, uh, no problem. I, I uh, hope uh, you have gone through these questions. Have you gone through these questions? Were you able to solve uh, these questions? How many were you able to solve? How many questions were you able to solve? Okay. 
Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. Now we have G, G plus four and three times G plus four. If you add all these quantities, you're going to get 51. That is what the question talks about. So you just add all the quantities. We have G plus G plus four plus three times G plus four, which is going to give you 51. So we have G plus G plus four, expand the bracket, 3G plus 12 is equal to 51. So we have altogether 5G plus 16 is equal to 51. Bring 16 to the other side. Oh, we, we don't have to solve for G, okay? You don't have to solve for G. Yeah, very good. So we have uh, 5G plus 16 is equal to 51 given in the question directly. Option D directly matches the expression we just got. We don't have to solve for G. Yes, cool. Yes or no? Yeah, now let's move on to problem number nine. Uh, I guess some people have uh, told me that this is the most difficult problem. Okay, the denominator of a rational number. What is a rational number? What is a rational number? A number which can be written in a fraction form, right? P over Q, P by Q form, right? A number which can be written in the P by Q form. Okay. The other numbers are called irrational numbers. I hope you have come across these terms, rational and irrational. Have you come across these terms, rational and irrational? Yeah. The numbers which can be written in the P by Q form where P and Q are integers. For example, two by three is a rational number. I'll just quickly tell you what a rational number is. Say for example, two by three is a rational number. Is two a rational number? Is two a rational number? Is two a rational number? Yes, because it can be written as two by one, two over one. Is uh, point two is a rational number? Is this a rational number? Zero point two. Point two. Is this a rational number? Yes, this is a rational number because this can be written as two over ten. Right? Is uh, root four a rational number? Root over four? Square root of four. Is this a rational number? Ye yes. Uh oh. That's a rational number because you know it's nothing but two, which is two over one. That's a rational number. Now it's a square root, but you can simplify and get it as an integer. Okay, it's a perfect square root. I mean, it's a, it's a perfect square, as in four is a perfect square, right? However, numbers like root two root two is not a rational number. You can't find numbers P and Q such that you can write this as P by Q. This won't be possible. You can never find numbers P and Q such that you can write root two as P by Q or P and Q or indices, right? Root two two is not a rational number. It is called what we call an irrational number. Yes. What about uh, a number like pi? A number like pi? Is this a rational number? No, that is also again irrational number. 
Okay. Irrational numbers, when they are expressed expressed in their decimal form, when they are expressed in the decimal form, they will have infinite number of digits. Infinite number of digits after the decimal point. And there will not be any pattern. Okay, there will not be any pattern. Of course, a number like one by three has infinite number of digits because this is point three, 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 three. But there is a pattern. Okay. There is a recurring pattern. But in irrational numbers, there won't be a pattern. Right? So after decimal point, the numbers will not stop. They will not terminate. And they will not repeat. Which means they will not recur. There is no pattern. Okay? So that's about uh, rational numbers. Rational numbers and irrational numbers put together, we call them as real numbers. Okay? And these are the numbers which can be represented on a number line. Root to two is a real number, so it can be represented on a number line. Okay? So this is going to be some number between one and two. Similarly, pi is approximately 3.14 something. So we can indicate the number on a number line. We can indicate those numbers on a number line. So rational numbers and irrational numbers put together form the real numbers and all the numbers uh, from in the center of real numbers can be represented on what we call a real number line. Okay. We can represent them on a real number. Of course, there are numbers which cannot be represented on a number line. They are called complex numbers. Have you heard of complex numbers, imaginary numbers? Have you heard of uh, imaginary numbers or complex numbers? Yes or no? Complex numbers or imaginary numbers. Have you heard of these terms? Others, others, uh, yes. No problems, it's, it's okay. It strictly doesn't fall under your SAT curriculum. Okay, you, you don't worry about it too much. We, we will just, we'll see that soon, later on, okay? So let's go to the question. So we have a rational number with a denominator and a numerator, okay? So it clearly mentioned that the denominator of a rational number is greater than its numerator by eight. Okay. So there are two unknown quantities, the numerator and the denominator. The denominator is greater than its numerator by eight. So let's choose the numerator as X. Let's choose the numerator as X. Then the denominator is going to be x plus h because the denominator is greater than the numerator by h. So your rational number, the number is going to be x over x plus h. Make sense? Right? A number is going to be x over x plus h. x over x plus h. Yes. Now, if the numerator is increased by 17, now in the next scenario, numerator is increased by 17. Increased by 17. This becomes x plus 17. And the denominator is decreased by 1. This is decreased by 1. So this becomes x plus h minus 1. So which is x plus 7. Now say that, now they say that the new number, the new number is 3 by 2. The new number is 3 over 2. So the new number is going to be, the new numerator is x plus 17. The new denominator is x plus 7. 
the new numerator is x plus 17, the new denominator is x plus 7, and the new number so obtained is 3 by 2. So x plus 17 divided by x plus 7 is going to be 3 by 2. Is this fine? So initially we had x as the numerator and x plus 8 as the denominator. You increase the numerator by 17, so it becomes x plus 17. You decrease the new denominator by 1, so it becomes x plus 7. Now the new number is new numerator divided by new denominator, which is x plus 17 divided by x plus 7. And that is given to be 3 by 2. Is it clear so far? Is it clear so far? Please let me know. Others, this is one question that you guys told me as the difficult one. Now we just cross multiply and solve it. This is strictly not a linear equation, but if you cross multiply, you're going to get a linear equation. Okay. So we have two times x plus 17 is equal to three times x plus seven. So we have two x plus 34 is equal to three x plus 21. Bring two x to the other side, 21 to the other side. So we have three x minus two x is equal to 34 minus 21. Yeah. Your x comes out as 30. Your x comes out as 30. So now your original fraction, the original rational number was, yeah, I'm just going to verify the answer. The original fraction was 13 divided by 13 plus 8. 13 plus 8 is 22. This was our original fraction. Okay, this satisfies what is given in the question. The denominator is greater than the numerator by eight. So 13 and 22 can be chosen. Now, you're going to, you're going to increase the numerator by 17. So numerator becomes 30 and decrease the denominator by Oh, by the way, it's not 22, it's uh, 21. Sorry, I'm sorry. It's going to be 21. Because you know, you're adding eight. You're adding eight, not nine. You are adding eight. So 13 and 21. Now you increase the numerator by seven. It becomes, numerator becomes 30, 17. You add 17 to the numerator, it becomes 30. You subtract one from the denominator, it becomes 20. 30 divided by 20, it becomes three or two. So it matches. Okay. Our answer matches. Yeah. Okay. Let's go to so far. So good. Nah? Let's go to the next question. The digits of a two digit number differ by 13. So that is a very interesting question. Okay. That's a very interesting question. The digits of a, you have to note down this question. Okay. This is a uh, different type of question. The digits of a two digit number differ by three. If the digits are interchanged and the resulting number is added to the original number, we get 143. What is the original number? Okay. So let us assume that the digits are x and x plus 3. So let's say this is the unit place. This is tens place. Okay. Now what is the actual value of the number? Units place, the digit is x. 10th place, the digit is x plus 3. So what is the actual number? Actual number is going to be 10 times x plus 3 plus x, right? 10 times x plus 3 plus x. 
Hope this is clear. Hope this is clear. I have chosen units place as x. So naturally, tens place can be taken as x plus 3. So we have 10 times x plus 3 plus x as the actual number. For example, if you have 3 at units place and 5 at tens place, the number is 53. It's actually 10 times 5 plus 3. Same logic here. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yeah. Now you swap the digits. Swap the digits. If the digits are interchanged, swap it. Now at the tens place, we have x plus 3. Units place. Oh, sorry. Units place we have we have uh, x plus three tens place we have x. So this time the number is going to be ten times x plus x plus three. Ten times x plus x plus three. Okay, now you add these two quantities, add these two quantities, you're going to get 143. So the question says 10 times x plus 3 plus x is one number. The number obtained by swapping the digits is 10 times x plus x plus 3. And this is going to give me 143. Clear? So we have 10x plus 30 plus x plus 10x plus x plus 3 is equal to 143. So we have 10x, 10x, x, x. So we have 22x plus 33 is equal to 143. Bring 33 to the other side. We have 22x is equal to 143 minus 33. This is going to be 110. So your x is going to be 110 divided by 22. So we have, this is 10 times 11. And this is 2 times 11. 10 by 2, which is 5. x came out as 5. I'll take two more minutes and then we wind up, okay? X came out as five. X came out as five. Cool. So our number is, our number is nothing but, this is five and this is eight. Our number is nothing but 58. Let's see if it matches. Let's see if it matches. So 58, you swap the digits, 85, you add the numbers, we have 143. Yeah, that is right. There is a catch, but there is a catch. There is a catch. The question just says that the digits of two digit number differ by three. It doesn't say which is the greater number. It doesn't say which is the greater number. It doesn't say which digit is greater. It just say they differ by three. You understand the point? They just say they differ by three. They don't say which number is greater. So we, when we chose the number, we chose the unit place as a smaller number and tens place as a larger number. We could have chosen the other way around also as well, right? We could have chosen the other way around. We could have chosen unit place as x plus 3 and tens place as x. 
Then after swapping, the number would be this one. After swapping, the number would be this one. Math would be the same, but you have one more answer. Okay. The answer is nothing but 85. So both 85 and 58 are our answers to this question. Both 85 and 58 are answers to this question. Make sense? Right. The difference between the digits is given to be three. They have not specified that which digit is larger. So both 58 and 85 are the answers to this question. I hope this is clear. Please let me know uh, if you need further explanation. See, we have chosen units place as X and tens place as X plus three. We could have chosen the other way around. We could have chosen tens place as X, units place as X plus three. So after swapping, in the first case you got after swapping this way. In the second case, after swapping, you would have got a, you, you would have got this way. In either case, in either case, the sum of two numbers will give you the same expression. So is this fine? Is this fine? There are two possibilities. There are two possibilities. But how do you mark the answer? In an MCQ, multiple choice question, there won't be any confusion because, you know, you can just look at the options and mark the one that is given in the answer. But in grid in type, grid type question, grid type question, you can, uh, you can answer any of these numbers as the answer and you'll get full credit. Okay. If there are multiple answers to a question, if there are multiple answers to a question, which is possible, which is quite possible in an SAT. That's why I wanted to mention this which is quite possible. In grid type question, a question can have more than one correct answer and you can answer any of the correct answers. You can mark any of the correct answer and you will get full credits. Okay. And we are done with linear equations in one variable. We are moving on to linear inequalities in one variable in the next class. So before that, I'm going to give you a small reading assignment. Okay, I'll just give you the notes for the next class. Please do read up. And there are some simple 10 questions with that, give, along with that. Okay, so I'll share those in the group. Please have a look. Please read it up because you have already seen simple equations. We'll be dealing with only simple equations. You have already seen very simple inequations, sorry, inequalities, simple linear inequalities in one variable. Okay. I'll, I'll definitely solve all those questions in the next class. I'll also discuss the concepts, but before coming to the class, I request you to read it up and come, come, come prepared to the next class. Okay. It won't take much of a time. Okay. Then see you.